Hello, everybody, and welcome to my brand new podcast, Queer is Here to Stay. My name is Ronnie. I identify as Two-Spirit, um, although the definitions vary from place to place across North America. So in Western terms, I am gender non-conforming, non-binary, and asexual. So a lot more terminologies, so I will stick with Two-Spirit. And I just wanted to give you guys a bit of an introductory episode, because uh, I plan on having a few hosts here and there. Uh, to d- discuss various issues within the LGBT community. And um, as the acronym is quite long, which will be a focus of one of my episodes for sure, um, and there are a lot of umbrella terms. I decided uh, queer would be the best way to identify um, this podcast with. Uh, that in itself is a huge umbrella term as well, and it encompasses a lot. doesn't explain everything either. So queer is here to stay, and I want people to know about the various issues that affect um, queer people and uh, the sort of discrimination everyone faces. And I figured podcast was a very good platform for it. Actually, I had to be convinced. Um, I am a freelance writer by trade, and I was writing for the website that's actually helping me produce this. Um, I'm simply the face. Um, And uh, that website is Planksip. Um, And the background you see before you guys uh, was actually made by the founder, Daniel Sanderson, who was the one who, who convinced me to create the podcast in the first place. As you can tell, I am a nervous person. I get anxiety quite easily. And I figure this to be a form of public speaking just as much as if I was out in the world talking on a podium or something. So I get anxiety. I ramble. Uh, Sometimes my words roll together. But when I'm excited about a subject, my words uh, combine themselves and it's sometimes hard to understand me. So having guests to bounce um, stuff off of is fantastic. And while I identify myself within the LGBT community, I am by no means an expert. I don't know everything. I want to know everything, but I certainly don't know it. So I'm going to have guests come on and help me explain things to people, bring to light issues, bring to light the good things, the negative things, what things mean, where people can reach out for resources, at least within Canada, because that's where I'm located. Um, And hopefully I can hear from you guys about your stories, because my coming out was certainly, I think, unique. I can start off by saying that at the age of 11, I think I liked girls, but I wasn't sure. So I said bisexual, but I kept it to myself. Nobody knew. And uh, actually, one of my best friends was my crush. But the other best friend uh, was a bit homophobic. Uh, I'm not sure if she still is, because she's a quite educated young lady. And um, me and this other girl were very close. We'd known each other for a very long time, since we were four. uh, While the other, we were bullied for looking alike, for hanging out together, hanging out with no one else. Also, if she started dating boys at that time, like 11, like why? Uh, We were called the Lisbo couple, even though I didn't know who I was at that point. It seemed to really get to her. So come high school, not friends anymore. She didn't talk to me. So I was very confused and I started dating boys. Um, One relationship lasted literally six hours. That was a very uncomfortable six hour relationship. Let's just say that. Um, and my second one lasted a month. Um, my third one lasted eight months. And then my fourth relationship I got um, once I was out of school. And I had fully identified myself as bisexual by that point. And so was my boyfriend at the time. And he was very okay with it. Still is actually. We're, you know, still getting along. And I'm like... I don't know. Maybe I was comfortable with myself at the time, but things certainly change. Everything always changes. Um, and we were together for almost four years. Um, but then, like, I don't know, I just wasn't comfortable with myself. So that relationship ended and I spiraled into a really bad depression. Like I've had depression my entire life. And this was just bad. Like I went for a two kilometer walk crying at night because I was just, you know, in that zone. Then, like, I'm attending university at the moment. I'm actually really close to getting my bachelor's. I'm very ecstatic. Um, And it's taken me a long time to get there because of 
you know, <laughs> this entire journey. So I went to my uh, university's student resources office and got an appointment with uh, one of the counselors for mental health. Now, our school is small, so there's only two. And I was able to get in to see one. Um, I'd seen one a few years previously, but I don't know. I guess I just wasn't ready. And with this new counselor, uh, we talked everything out. Didn't really figure thing, anything out. But then I walked by the shelf that had all the brochures. And one of them said Two Spirit. And it caught my attention. I didn't know why. So I grabbed the brochure and read it when I got home. And I'm like, oh my God, that's me. Like, this is exactly how I feel. And yeah, um, I was still in a bit of a depression. Like, even though I figured out who I was, it's not like, you know, the bad feelings went away. So um, my family has a lot of birthdays near Christmas. So I was at my grandparents and we're celebrating my younger sister's birthday. And I don't know, I got into a bit of a mood and said some things. I don't even remember what I said, but it got my sister upset. And well, I don't think I'm a drama queen, but I probably was. Um, and so I was crying in the bathroom at my grandparents' house on my sister's birthday. So I felt fantastic. And I was just saying bad things about myself. And my grandma was trying to get me to open the door and yada, yada, yada. And I told her, I'm weird. I'm very weird. And she's like, no, you're not. You know, the typical family thing of, you know, you're not weird. You're you. And I'm like, no, I'm weird. I'm too spirit. I'm gay, essentially. And she's like, oh, okay. 100% acceptance from the get-go with my grandma. It was fantastic. And I felt like, oh, so much had been lifted off my chest. And then um, I didn't come up to the rest of the family right away. Um, My family's not very religious, but we're definitely religious. Um, And my mom embraces her faith fully. And I'm like so proud of her for that because like, I wish I had the faith to have our faith. Let's just put it that way. Um, so I accidentally came up to my mother on National Coming Out Day in Canada, which is like near Thanksgiving. Yeah, that was just a weird coincidence. And I'm just like to my mother, well, as a gay person, this is what I think. And I'm like, she's like, well, <laughs> well, she's an amazing woman, but not totally accepting, not at first. She went two months without talking to me. It was a bad time. I felt depressed. Then my grandmother phoned her, told her off. Go grandma. I love her. <laughs> And, well, things were a bit awkward for a while, and, like, my mom was coming to terms with it, but, hey, it's me. It, it's not you, you know? And, like, it's not about you kind of thing, you know? So I just let my mom be. Um, I didn't try to factor religion in any of our conversations, although it somehow always came up. And um, eventually my mom got a talking to from one of her friends who actually used to be, like, um, something called the den mother in her um, high school, which was, like, kind of a boarding school. And um, they became friends in the, later in the life. And my mom's like, God made me. And, you know, religion, you know, God, it's a, always a bit of an iffy subject. But mom said God made me. And that was enough. And she's not totally okay with it. But she's not, you know, readying the pitchfork. <laughs> so, um, and then, like, my mom's a seamstress. And um, I study uh, Indigenous languages as part, because I'm Métis. And when I was looking for um, a translation, this is a bit of a deviation, but it has a point, I promise. Um, I like Ojibwe. I like learning Ojibwe. Um, I've tried learning other languages, but Ojibwe is the one that catches me the most. And I tried to find, like, my mom started sewing masks, um, homemade masks, uh, during the pandemic, when everything hit. And um, I couldn't find the proper translation for like my mom sews masks and the translation actually wound up the closest I could find was my mom sews medicine so my mom is a healer in a sense and I love that and one day like she doesn't really message me at night because she's usually in bed by like nine or ten and she asked me what my pride flag colors were this was very out of the blue and at night which is like so unlike my mother And I'm like, this is what my pride colors look like. You know, the purple and the gray and the black and the white. And she told me she was making a ribbon skirt for me, a traditional indigenous ribbon skirt. And to go from like not talking to me to making something so special. Oh my God, I'm going to start crying and ruin my makeup. Um, Mm. But it was amazing. And it like, like, I'm still at loss for words. I wear it and 
I feel fantastic. Like, I own a total of three skirts, all of which have been made by my mother. And two of them are ribbon skirts. One of them is my pride colors. The other one is the medicine wheel colors. And oh, it was just amazing. It took her a bit longer on my skirt just because, like, she's getting requests from everybody to do ribbon skirts. She can send one off to Scotia. It was fantastic. And, um, oh, <laughs> um, and like, I know she's not totally comfortable with it, and I'm okay with that because my mom is my mom and I love her. <laughs> My third coming out was to my grand, my other grandmother, my father's mother. We think she's been having like dementia for a while, uh, but she wouldn't accept it. She's been recently put in a home, which is kind of scary, especially in the midst of, you know, the pandemic. But um, she's always been a bit ornery, you know, didn't take no shit from no one kind of person. Um, and it kind of just got more aggressive as she got older. Um, and this was again during my sister's birthday that this happened. Great time for my sister. Sorry. Um, but I told my grandma, like me and my sister were joking back and forth, making innuendos, being a little bit inappropriate, but just joking around. And, um, it got to the topic of my sexuality, you know? And I'm like, yeah, like girls, like they're so cute kind of thing. Right. And my grandma was like, that's ridiculous. You're in college, you're just going through a phase, you know, that kind of lander. Um, I wound up getting to the point of screaming at her, and um, she screamed back with the words along the lines of, you're an abomination, and I wish you were never born. And this is my non-religious grandmother, by the way. So that hurt. I didn't talk to her for three years. Um, and then I had one phone call, and then she was off to the home. So that kind of like, oh my God. God, did that ever affect me bad? I was hyperventilating. But I got to the point where my dad actually, like, finally, like, openly accepted. Because I don't think he was ever against it or for it. You know, he was just sort of like, eh, whatever. Um, but I finally got him to call me by my preferred name of the time, which was Kai, which is, like, um, a shortened version of my actual name. But it turns out to be a prefix for, like, a Korean language that means feminine. So not exactly the <laughs> name I wanted. So uh, now I go by Ronnie. Um, and it's a name my sister gave me. Now, I'm the oldest of three. I have a little brother and a little sister. But my personality makes me seem like I'm the youngest because I am a bit more withdrawn, introverted, shy. You know, I clung on to the, you know, my mother's skirt a bit longer than most kind of thing. And my sister, um, during this pandemic, actually, uh, she got pregnant with her um, husband over in BC, which is quite far from where I am. I only got to meet my niece once. But while she was pregnant with my niece, I was trying to find a new name that fit me. And I was going to go with Jeannie because not only is it part of my gamer tag, but it's like um, a very popular name in my family tree. It's usually a middle name, but I actually have a set of grandparents called Eugene and Eugenia, which I, I love those names, even if they're old fashioned. And um, uh, I'm like Jeannie, but it's just, it fits, but it's not quite right. And then my sister was like, what about Ronnie? Ronnie can be like short for girls and boys names, you know, like Sharon, Veronica, Arnold, Ronald. And I'm like, that fits. It's, it's like perfect. And then I started going by Ronnie at that point. And the fact that my sister gave it to me while she was like about five months pregnant, like it makes it all that more special. So my journey has been weird. It's been long and winding, full of ups and downs. But I got to the point where I am myself. I am OK to be myself. I'm OK to announce it to the world and to you guys and to talk about issues that affect the community with people who know about these issues um and yeah so <laughs> that's my story um this will be episode one of my new podcast queers here to stay next episode we will have a guest um from the sexual education resource center also known as Cirque, uh here in manitoba so we'll talk to her about a few things, get to know her, um, and we'll see how I can relate to some of the issues. I won't be able to relate to all of them because I think I've had it not great, but I've had an awesome support system, even with the dance. So for those who don't have a support system, I, I'd like to help them figure out their next steps. Which reminds me, my preferred pronouns are they and them. Sorry, you have to wait till the end of the video to figure that out. Because like, I usually see it right away. And like they and them isn't quite what feels right. But it's non-binary. And it's I, I don't like being called by feminine pronouns. I don't like being called by male pronouns. So they and them 
time is what I'm going by for now. Um, but like people say, like once you get a label, like you should stick with it. That's not true. Like one of the Q's in like LGBTQ in the acronym stands for questioning, meaning you're questioning like who you are, who you identify as, how you identify your attraction, your gender, everything like that. So it's not a static thing. Like I first thought I was just asexual and bisexual and lesbian, but no, two spirit. That's who I am. So with things ever changing, um, I hope you guys find this episode well. And I will see you guys for the next episode with my very first guest. Very excited. See you guys later. Bye-bye.